Hallelujah. Everybody say, heaven is my home. Uh, say, I'm not of this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to tell you something else. We're not just passing through either. Brother Dad, that's way too passive. We're not just passing through. We're here to change things, man. We're here to, ch we're here to pull down. We're here to pull down and to build. We're here to pluck up and to plant. Yeah. We're here to run Satan off of all of his territory. We're here to be a part of seeing the church of the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. We're not going to stand by and just watch his name profane. Parents, let me just tell you this. Those of you that are here and those of you that are watching by the web, listen, if you're not watching in your home and looking at what your children are doing, if you're not investigating their life and seeing whether or not they're filled with the Holy Ghost, you are fundamentally missing out on everything God has given you to do as an assignment. Because if your children aren't full of the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, they will be soon filled with Satan. They'll soon be overwhelmed by the powers of darkness. It's time that people rise up right where they're standing. Stop looking about going to Asia or Africa or the Middle East. Start looking at your own family and your own home. Get a burden to make sure that your children are protected against all the wiles of the enemy. We're not playing any minor games here. Listen. Paul put it on this level. He said you must be full, filled up with the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. That's a whole lot of divine ability. If you approach this thing in with any other kind of an attitude, you're going to get taken out, blown up. So did you get that? So are you going to obey? See, that's the big problem. Father has given us resources. Man, we're going to have, we're going to have revivals that are going to take Everything that happened with Evan Roberts and everything that happened at the Azusa Street with John G. Lake and with Bartleman and with, and, and, and with Wigglesworth and with, uh, with the Amy Simple and I'll take Mariah Woodworth before that. All those things combined, Father's going to continue to increase it with greater magnitude. But it's going to happen through people who've learned to be obedient. I hear folks all the time, they say they want to hear the voice of God, but when God speaks like he just spoke, they are reluctant to obey. So if you don't obey, you actually stop your ears up from hearing God. You can pray all you want to be able to hear God, but if you don't respond to his voice when he speaks, all that happens is your heart becomes dull and your ears become deaf, slow to hear. <laughs> Hard of hearing, rather. Now I pray in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands if you have a sad countenance. You're not supposed to have one in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. If you need to repent, get it done with. Because it's easy to get past that. Father is so merciful. He's so loving. He's so forgiving. He's so restoring. He doesn't slit up. He doesn't stop. I want you to get filled up right now because if you're not strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might, you're not going to be able to withstand the powers of darkness. Just understand it. That's not passive. That's active. That is aggressive. That is violent. That is determined. That is absolutely certain. Must have it. It's full of hunger. It's got every kind of thirsting that you can imagine within your soul. If you're not hungry tonight, if you're not thirsty, it's only because you've grown cold and lukewarm and it's time to get fired up by the fire of the Holy Ghost that is available for you at this very moment. At this very moment. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. You know, it's a wonderful thing to consider the fact that Jesus' ministry is a liberating ministry. Before anybody was able to even get around to asking him what his ministry was about, he said, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news uh, to the poor, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound, to say, hey, it's the acceptable year of the Lord. Peace to everybody. Come on in, behold the glory and the majesty of the living God. What a day! <laughs> what a day! Woo! What a day! <laughs> what a day! What a day! <laughs> what a day! What a day! 
I did it. Hallelujah. Woohoo! The Lord has provided us with such amazing help. He's given us the Holy Ghost. And, and somehow we fail to realize how to allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do to find free course through our lives. Because if you'll allow the Spirit of the living God to flow through you like rivers, all those stuff, that, all those things that would try to affix itself to your thinking, to your affections and to your emotions on a daily basis, would absolutely be washed away and you'd find yourself raptured in the glory, caught away in the Spirit. I see folks so bound up with their circumstances. It's Satan's trick to keep anybody or as many as he possibly can from moving in the authority of this free spirit. Moving in the authority of this liberating spirit, the Holy Spirit. Moving in the authority of the power of God <laughs> to live out the life of heaven on this earth to shine brighter than the noonday sun to sound like a, a rushing mighty wind from heaven. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Tonight we want you to be stirred up with the righteous cause that the Lord has given us. We, listen, we don't want you to be downcast. We want you to understand God has purposed us for us to rise up in an authority that somehow has been so un misunderstood, neglected. Somehow it's just, it's never been by the masses of the church really even basic apprehension of it. But tonight I'm believing God for a spirit of wisdom and revelation fall on you that from this day forward you get to look out of heaven and see what's going on in earth. Instead of being consumed with yourself and all that's going on in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Dear people, we just want you to know that God has made us radical for a purpose. We're not a status quo church, and uh, not, we're not status quo people, so we can't have a status quo church. We don't like unhappiness. It's our enemy. We don't like worry and fret and fear. It's our enemy. Why? Because it stops the flow of the boldness and the authority of heaven. That's all. Somebody said, are you telling me you don't have problems or you can't be apathetical or concerned about people who do have problems? Sure, we can be concerned. But the bottom line of it is, is we're not going to let those concerns stop our advancement in our pursuit. Because there's nobody who's going to be changed. Nobody's going to be healed. Nothing's going to be different until somebody's got an authority to bind everything that is unlike God, to cast it out, and to, and to proclaim liberty, to speak the word of life and healing, to be able to begin to shine in the ministry of Jesus. Let me tell you something. I'm going to talk to you real quickly about consecration and sanctification. Listen, God has, listen to me. Parents, you watch, you look at your kids because if they're not, if they're not, if they're not in this, you, you're responsible to mentor them and get them in this. God has called us to be consecrated, to live the life of Jesus, to do what Jesus does. We, we get all of these forms and ideas and, and, and things have been just so skewed by, by various different theological treaties and, and diatribes and all kinds of speeches. Look, sanctification is about you and I being willing to let the Holy Spirit take us and baptize us into the person, Jesus Christ. That's what it is. Right. And, and what it is, is it's about being willing to do what he yeah. did yeah. and what he's doing. You, and you, you, listen, listen, people, listen to me. Listen to me. If you could see from my perspective right now what it looks like, what the church looks like from a heavenly realm, you would become extremely passionate as I am extremely passionate about this because it doesn't look like Jesus and the only person that you really can begin to have a powerful impact on to start with is you yourself 
The only person I can begin to really have a powerful impact on is me, myself. I'm going to stay full of the Holy Ghost because I don't want Jesus' name to be profaned anymore. I'm going to stay full of the things of the Spirit because I know what God's purposed me to do, to go everywhere representing Him to a lost and dying world in which Satan is running every kind of influence and, and every kind of, of interference against that. And somebody's going to have to have some authority to do something about that. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm believing God that every one of you are going to get stirred up and you're going to help me over the next couple of months. I'm, we're going to bring pa, uh, Pat Schatz line in. And, and God's using Pat. Call, he's called, uh, he, he, you know, the Lord laid something on his heart and he started doing something called I Am Remnant. And I want you to look like Remnant. Okay, I don't want, I don't want, you, to look like the, I don't want you to look like the other part. I don't want you to look like a dry, dead, lifeless church. I don't want you to look like that because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do my job. Somebody said to me a long time ago, they said, what do I got to do to be able to keep the move of God in, in the church? I said, just keep the fire on it because all the dead wood will be burned up. Just continually place the demands of God upon things because everybody who's refusing to cooperate with Jesus are going to leave. And then ultimately when that, is, when that finally reaches a specific point of which Father is happy with, then the fire of God is going to fall and the whole continent will be changed in a day. It's true. You look at Evan Roberts. He stood his post in a very small church in an obscure place where there was no possibility for him to get a leg up from any big ministry. It wasn't networking. It wasn't nothing. It was somebody who was willing to take a hold of the power of God, who was relentless about having what's going on in heaven taking place in earth. And then one day, the fire of God fell as he began to say a prayer, a prayer that he had prayed for many years, that he ultimately prayed until the day he died. He prayed this. He said, Father, the altar is ready. The wood is laid in order the sacrifice is prepared send your fire now and it wasn't just a it wasn't just a prayer that he prayed you know that was out of rote memory or anything it was the passion of his heart I'm asking tonight what's the cry of your heart I mean, because a lot of people got a lot of ideas about what it means to serve God and serve uh, the things of, of the ministry of Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, only the ministry of Jesus, as it was revealed through his life, is going to be pleasing unto the Father. That's all that works. And I pray tonight you get really passionate about these things. Because if you'll begin to get passionate about having the ministry of Jesus and cooperating with Father in His plan, because He's got one purpose, and that is to glorify the name of His only begotten Son, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here without limit for one purpose, to reveal and manifest Jesus. And if you get passionate about doing it God's way, everything about your life will change. I am so interested in seeing people get so anointed in this place that they get promoted into, uh, you know, the, the, the ministry, either evangelism, mission field, whatever. But it's time. These are the days. And what, I mean, wouldn't it be terrible if you got passed by? I mean, how would you feel if you just got passed by? If you've seen everybody else around you begin to step into raising the dead ministry because that's Jesus' ministry. All the excuses don't work. All the reasons why not don't work. Reality of it is, if your heart is sincere and you lay your hands on someone who's dead and they didn't raise from the dead, you would, it would drive you to your knees. It would drive you to fasting and prayer until you touched heaven and got the real deal from, heaven, from, from the realms of heaven. And so th th these things have got to be stirred in your spirit. You know, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm finishing up a, a book right now on the miracles of the ministry of Jesus. It's called the signs and wonders of, the, of Jesus' ministry. And you know, he, he just didn't do anything without signs and wonders. I mean, he starts off his ministry, starts off his ministry. First of all, dear people, I want you to know you want to walk with God in an obedience until heaven opens up before you. And a dialogue begins to take place because it's available for everyone. What happens is we shut relationship off. We, 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 we cause relationship to fall far short of what it should be. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now this old fractured tibia in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I, I break the power of pain off of you right now, baby. La brasa coronea. Sicaras preteya. Lucibera seya. 
Right? You guys could just sit there and look at me if you want, or you can pray. Pain out in Jesus' name. Out. Out right now. 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 Let me tell you what happened. Yesterday, he got in an accident. His, his uh, tibia is fractured, which goes through the growth, growth plate, and it's very painful. So right now, what we're doing is, I believe that if you can take a hold of the spirit of pain and you can break the power of pain, you can also uh, reach into the realm where the miracle of healing is as well. When, once pain is broken, pain's a strong man that tries to prevent healing, in other words. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to just pray with us, and then I'll get back to what I'm saying here in a minute. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Jude. Jude, how are you doing there? Did you just wake up? Are we having a combination of sleep problems and... Uh, little sleep? <laughs> Amen. We'll see, they got to take another x ray, I think. What is it, next week? And so he's good. He's good to go. He's good to go. So the bottom line of it is, is when you have the anointing and you can use it till you have the anointing, until you, and if you don't have the anointing, you're going to have to wait till you get the anointing. And the anointing begins, and, and I, I want to, because I was getting ready to mention something about relationship, people getting stuck in religion. The anointing begins in our life when we're born of the Spirit. We get an anointing to have a relationship. We get an anointing to know God. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, say, just think about this, your people. If you can just understand a relationship, has to, it takes reciprocation between two people. Okay? You don't have a relationship if it's a monologue. If the other person's not responding, you, as far as you're concerned, they didn't hear a single thing you said. The good news is Father's eyes are open. They're open to the righteous, or rather his eyes are upon the righteous, his ears are open unto their prayer. And uh, Father, it's all right. It's all right. Gene, go back there and lay hands on him. Just, I think, I think it's, I think it's a, a big part of sleep and another part of, of uh, it's, it's like one-third sleep, one-third I'm hot, and one-third I, I got a cast on my leg and it's even worse than, than the fracture. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. I, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to leave him over here wailing. The worst thing I could think of is they get up and walk out of the meeting while I'm talking, trying to get the saints to move in faith. And, and that, that sounds pretty hectic, doesn't it? Are you guys, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to go a whole nother level in God? A whole nother, whole nother level of authority? In Jesus' mighty name. A whole nother, whole nother level of usefulness. A whole nother, whole nother level of provision. A whole nother level of protection. A whole nother level of perfection. A whole nother level of divine order. Divine blessing. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for this work of grace that's taking place in, this, in, these, in, this li in these lives, in this family.
frighten the Holy Ghost over here, guys. Let me deal with this. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Jesus, for anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for the 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 anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing stirs off in our life to have a relationship. This is what the, we don't need that any man teach us, for the anointing teaches us all things. Huh? And it's taught us this very important thing, that we should abide in Him. And I just want you to open up the verse of Scripture real quickly to that in 1 John chapter, in chapter 1 John chapter 2. And uh, just make sure that everybody gets this, this is what the anointing's all about. Because I, I want you to understand something tonight. I, I, I want you to be able to grab a hold of that God has a whole lot more for you than what you've been enjoying. People have been living m way beneath the kind of relationship and authority that the Lord Jesus has called us up to. And so First Peter, forgive me, First John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But the anointing which we have received of him abides in you and you need that not any you don't need anyone to teach but the same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie even it is as it has taught you you shall abide in him dear people the anointing right here is described for you and i is a relationship anointing this is where it starts if the anointing is going to grow in your life if you're going to mature if you're going to develop into what we ultimately see the anointing did, did you understand the verse of scripture or see some over here? It's 1 John 2, 27. 1 John 2, 27. Are you with me? I want to take the time to make sure you see that. This is what the anointing's all about. Say, the anointing's all about me having a relationship. Say, the anointing's all about me having a relationship. Yeah, the anointing's all about me having a relationship. You can start right here in 1 John 2, 27. A lot of this is just about order in their house. Okay? Just help you understand what's going on. So it's just kind of all being gemished into one event over here. So I just want you to know. I want you to understand. Okay? We dealt with the pain. So I, I, I need to move on now. Here's where it starts. Starts for a relationship with the Lord. 1 John 2, 27. Starts, that's what the anointing is about. Now, where does it go? It's supposed to grow and to mature into a full manifestation of this. John 15, 16. John 15, 16. John 15, 16 says that the Lord, that we didn't, we didn't choose Him. He chose us. He ordained us so that we would bring forth fruit and that that fruit would remain. 
dear people, you must demand fruit because God's going to demand fruit. Listen, Father's going to demand fruit. I'm going to tell you right now, God's going to get some earnings off of his stuff. Listen to me. Papa's going to get some dividends. You listen to me. I hear a lot of people talking about the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish, and you need to have a lot of talking about that because there's a lot of people who don't have enough anointing to make it through the, midnight hour, the night hour. And the night's coming when no man can work. And, and you're going to have to have enough of a relationship with the Lord to be able to meet, make it through the troublesome times that are ahead of us. But listen to me. Listen. It's very important. He is one who has, uh, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 25, he says one who is a householder who has much goods and he takes those goods and he distributes them to all of his servants. To each one he distributes to them according to their individual abilities. To one he gives five, to another he gives two, to another he gives one. And when he comes, he's going to, he demands profit. And the reality of it is, when we think about the things that the Lord has left us to do, when we understand that all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, go and make disciples out of nations. When we recognize the authority, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they'll cast out devils. And then we stop and we take note that we've literally allowed Satan to overrun us. We've literally allowed sin and iniquity to come into our lives. No, I want you to think about the compound effect of iniquity. Seventy years ago, a movie came on the scenes in the United States of America and the secular world, not the Christian community, the secular world was in an uproar because it had one word in it, damn, gone with the wind. Today, Christians participate with things far more evil than that. They will, Christians tolerate what the secular world would not tolerate 70 years ago. Don't tell me we haven't allowed sin and iniquity into the camp. And I'm telling you, it shuts down relationship right there. That's why people are sad. That's why people are unhappy. That's why people are distracted. That's why they don't have hunger and thirst. That's why they become cold and indifferent. And when you see this going on in the world right now, in the church community, no that we the only hope for a lost and dying world we the salt we the light and you have been stirred by the spirit of the son by the spirit of the father by the spirit of the holy of holiness to participate with the, with whatever father wants when your heart's united with his heart you're not going to sit by and watch this nonsense go down you're not going to sit down and watch you're not going to sit by and watch this nonsense go down a relationship of love. Somebody said, how does the government of God work? How does the government of God work? Now, in Jesus' name. Now. Now, in Jesus' name. Huh? I understand. We're, we got, we're dealing with a little bit of, uh, forgive me, a little bit of Brad-itis in the situation. If it was an issue of pain, okay, not a problem. When it's an issue of the will and something's wrong in the wheel and in the nature and in the character look a lot of that has to do with our willingness to respond to the lord and there's a lot of this going on in adults that have been sitting around in the church wondering why the blessings and promises of god have passed them by it really just going to come down to simple obedience you say well i've obeyed well if you had of you would be where god wants you to be because it really everything that father has father has some absolute promises but most of them are conditional promises let me help you absolute promise there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells only righteousness absolute promise okay but conditional promise you're going if you're willing and obedient conditional promises okay and, and so I, I want you to grab a hold of tonight your responsibility to stand up on God's side and say enough is enough I'm done I'm done mixing it up with demon spirits I'm done interacting with the camp of, of the enemy as the name of Jesus is profaned I want you to grab a hold of this with me tonight I, I'll out preach the little guy over here. I'll, so if I get too loud for you, just put cotton in your ears. Okay. 
Because I, I want to grab out of your attention. I want, you, I, want you, I want to make this thing simple for you. I want to make faith simple for you. I want to make faith that moves mountains. Faith where nothing is, nothing is impossible. It's all found within this context of relationship that then impacts everything that goes on in your daily life and especially your relationships. And husbands, if you're mean to your wives, you're messing up. God's not listening to you. And wives, if you're not obeying your husbands, you're messing up. God's not listening to you. You busted up the relationship because in your, your life and the decisions that you make in your life on a daily basis have an impact in how you're interacting with the Father. And when Jesus Christ is centered to everything that you want and everything that you desire, and when your life is being filled up with his love, and when your life is being motiva motivated by his goodness, your attitude is going to get corrected quickly. Yeah, you might scream and holler at your wife for a little bit, but before long, the spirit of holiness is going to be so grieved, you're going to be stuck down on the floor, bawling your head off, crying out, God, oh, I'm so sorry. Because that's what, God, that's what godly sorrow is going to do to you. It's going to lead you to repentance. Do you understand me? However, if you've hardened your heart, if you've backslidden, and there's a lot of backsliders in the church today, if you've backslidden, you're not going to be able to hear nothing the Holy Ghost is saying. You won't respond to anything that He's doing, and you're going to go on in your ways. And ultimately, we're finding so many people that have gone into perdition. And it's a terrible thing. You say, going into perdition, yeah. They, they once knew the Lord Jesus Christ. They backslid. They became hard in their heart towards God. And they died. <laughs> and in hell, they lifted up their eyes, being in torment. Now, I know there's some people that don't believe that. And they believe that once you've said to Jesus, come into my life. And you can live however you want to live. And you're going to be right with God and make heaven. But the Bible doesn't testify of that. Beginning in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible testifies of just the opposite of that. And yeah, just the very, the very beginning of this whole thing is disobedience resulted in death. And sin still has the same wage. The law of the spirit of life, there's a spiritual law. And the spiritual laws of life tell us to walk in the spirit. And we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The spiritual laws of life that are in Christ Jesus have made us free from the laws, the spiritual laws of sin and death. I mean, free. I just, how free is that? And somebody said, I, I, I need you to help me understand. I'm going to tell you, help you understand. This is how free it is. You're filled with the spirit of holiness to a level that the life of God is going forth out of your life on with such an incredible, it is such an incredible magnitude. You, you can only liken it to rivers of living water. Rivers of water. Just, I'll just reduce it to just rivers converging on themselves and issuing out of you. But the issue is the life of God. Furthermore, not only is he on the inside of you with that kind of display coming out of you, but you baptized in his glory. I mean, he surrounds you. Not only, uh, he's not only in you, he's with you. And I mean, he's with you on a, on a very unique level. He's with you because God has baptized us in the glory cloud of heaven. But Father is baptized. Says, Come on now. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. Let me just help you, help you understand something. For all of those who just really can't get this, and you're just looking at me like a cow staring at a new gate, huh? and you're just unmoved, it's just like un, 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 you're untouched by the emotion of it. Okay, see, if I said, I just deposited, and I really did, you're, probably, you're not going to be touched by the emotion of this because you know it's not true. But if it really happened, I said, I just deposited a billion dollars in your bank account, you're going to look at me, you're going to go, really? I'm going to say, yeah. And ultimately, finally, you're going to, it's going to hit you. And you're going to be like that person on television who just won the sweepstakes. You're going to be jumping up and down going, wow, because it touches you. It's reality to you. It has value to you. It has meaning to you. When these things of heaven have value to you and meaning to you, something's going to begin to stir on the inside and you're going to be different. And all of a sudden, what's going to happen? The first thing's going to happen, instead of you walking around in your daily life talking about you, your problems, your issues, your challenges, Challenges, your needs, your pastor, the evangelist, or whatever else, you're going to be thanking the Lord that he has poured out such great riches upon you that you're actually walking around in the glory cloud of heaven. I mean, I mean Ed, that's enough to make, make me very, very happy. My mother taught me about faith when I was a, very, very young. My mother had a little song she sang, and that was just simply this. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Okay, all I need to feel good, 
All I need to do to get happy, all I need to be overwhelmed with a sense of great awe and security is to begin to think about the redemption that's provided for me in Christ Jesus. Just begin to imagine now that the reality of relationship with God has struck your soul that he's not in a heaven somewhere and there's a brass bar between you and him. That he's not somewhere far, far away and you're trying to get his attention. But you step over into the faith where he lives and dwells and abides in you where you become the temple of the living God and you've got something on the scale that Israel had when they were going to the wilderness when there was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. When that becomes a reality to you, you wake up in the morning going, you're unbelievable, Father. Jesus, you're amazing. I'm telling you. Getting happy, being thankful, and starting to praise God is better than a 40-day fast any day of the week, any day of the year, any day of your lifetime. Because the reality of it is, there's a couple of reasons for fasting, and one of them is to see strongholds broken off of people's life. Jesus didn't fast for that purpose, though. He did fast for the purpose of being totally sequestered, consecrated, given over to another kind of thinking, another kind of of understanding another kind of, of ability to, uh, to, to, to function than what everybody else lives in. He gave himself over to a place of consecration to the Father because he was going to deal with the biggest force of hell that Satan could muster because Papa said, bring it on, let it rip, he can take it. It's my only begotten son in whom I'm well pleased. He was anointed after having spent 30 years walking a perf uh, living out a perfect life, showing himself to be the lamb without spot. Heavens will open. Holy Ghost comes upon him. He's empowered with the glory that he had with the Father. He said, Father gave him a glory. You know that? And he said, the, Father, the, the glory that the Father gave to me, I've given to you also. That hasn't hit hardly anybody. It hit Reinhardt one day. And thus he went and did what he did. It hit, uh, I can go through a list. It hit Carlos one day, thus he went and did what he did. It hit Jeannie Wilkerson one day, thus she did what she did. It hit uh, uh, Kenneth Hagen one day, thus he did what he did. It hit Wigglesworth one day, thus he did what he did. And everything that we do, we do it out of that realm of relationship. Be sober. Somebody said, how can I be sober and not think of myself more highly than I ought to think when God has spoken in such lofty terms concerning my soul? Look at what you're doing. Look at what you've done. That'll sober you up real quick. Now, what should be the response? Oh, poor me, I'm such a failure. No, the cry should go, Father, I want an increase of the anointing. I want to be more useful to you. Father God, take my life and make of me everything you purpose. The prayer life changes when this becomes a reality. The sound of your voice changes. The participation with the worship, with the praise, it changes. Everything changes when this becomes a reality. Otherwise, you're in a prison. And there's no people who so bound as Christians. I'm telling you, I have watched as the thousands and the tens of thousands have come running to Jesus on the foreign field with just a whisper, just a... Hello! And the power of God sweep the place and people totally set free and liberated from the problems. But Christians get into a prison, especially in the Western world, that is very difficult to get them out of it. And I want you to get out of it. I want you to be able to say when Pat comes, I am remnant. Hallelujah. God's always got a remnant. And they look just like him and they act like him and they do what he, they do his deeds. Amen. They do the deeds of the Father. Amen. 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 I tell you what, now I listen to me. If I didn't have joy and happiness in my life, I'd paint a big old uh, smile on my face like a clown. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd paint it on there until I could I could till I could match it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know, I, if, you, if you don't have joy, hire somebody to tickle you all day, whatever. I mean, get with the program. Listen, my Uncle Charles says this. He's a great theologian. He was, he was Dake's right-hand man, and he says this. He says this. Wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with him. I'm going to tell you what God is doing. He's doing joy. He's doing goodness. Can you imagine living your whole day in goodness? I mean, my, my goodness. I mean, if you, if you just... 
Well, just one evidence of the Holy Ghost in relationship with them is that all day you get to have goodness. Who doesn't want that? And if the people around you start seeing you live like this for more than a day, so that they can make sure it's not just a flash in the pan or some kind of a virus, they can see you live this way for more than a week. They can see you live this way day and day. I'm telling you, it's a light that shines. It cannot be hid. It will transform people's lives. It's fruit that people want to come and eat of. It's true. It's true. I was, I, 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 was, I was telling Pat the other day, I said, man, listen. I, I said, take this, take, and I'm going to say it to you in the same way. Take this with a, a certain amount of giving me a, a liberty, okay? And not being absolutely hardcore fact, okay? It is as though the Father has retained the loss from coming into the kingdom because he doesn't want him to come into a church that's messed up and they'll spoil it. And then all, they get around you and they hear you talking bad about one another and they hear you in the, in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life and then they say, wait a minute. I'm back where I started from. And besides that, I'm not having near as much fun. And I don't really feel any different because sin isn't going to give you the sin, participating in the sin and allowing yourself to get rooted in it is going to bring you back into the same sorrow, the same misery, the same pain. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. You better keep your tongue from evil and your lips to speak no guile. Because everybody says that Father's on their side. But he said, I'm not. If your lips have been speaking evil and your tongue has been speaking guile, my ears are closed up to your prayer. But what Father has chosen for us, he's chosen us to come into mature in a realm of the anointing that whatever we ask, he will do it. That's John, 16, John 15, 16. Think about it. It starts an anointing, a given anointing to be able to dwell in him, to be able to abide in him, to be able to know him, to be able to interact with him. The natural mind cannot in any way interact with God. I mean, that, that realm, I just think about this, dear people. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. The logismos of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. The logics of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. The scripture says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but God power. For a purpose to pull down strongholds, to cast down logics, the rational reasoning logics of men. What happens is, what happens is we try to figure things out. Right now in the name of Jesus, I, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, if that's all I had to deal with in the spirit right here, right now, dealing with people's emotions and attitude, that is easy. Think about what's going on in some of your spirits right now, in your attitudes, in the rational thinkings of your mind. It's not the mind of Christ. It's not the mind of the Spirit. It's not the realm of the divine. It's the realm of confusion. It's the realm of circumstance. It's the realm that Satan literally has influenced the church to make us irrelevant. Not radical. And the world's looking for something radical. And something real. Radical and real. And I'm telling you right now, listen, when you, you can see, there can be a glorious great vineyard. Let me touch them. There could be a glorious grape vineyard, but if it's in the winter time, you don't have any reason to go over there because it looks terrible. Doesn't it? Huh? How many of you know that? Are you with me? Everybody knows that. Raise your hand. Wave at me. But when it's green, it's a little bit more inviting. She won't go over there. Huh? Too many bugs. Huh? And there's no need to go over there. Why? There's nothing for you there. You can get all that you want from a distance. But when there's fruit, you're going to get up in there. I don't care how much of bugs, how many bees. I don't care how much rash you might get on your skin. You go get up in there. There's fruit. And it's good fruit. If it's a good vineyard, it's good fruit. I love grapes. When, when grapes are like that, I eat stem and everything. I even eat the bugs. It's good stuff. It's good. The bugs are just protein, unless somebody's been spraying it with a bunch of insecticides and pesticides and herbicides and the rest of the sides. And, you know, my goodness, suicide. So we don't do that. But you know what I'm saying. If, it, if it's good, if it's wholesome, if it's right. And the church is supposed to look like that. We're supposed to be his vineyard. And Father's caring for his vineyard. And he's saying, listen, and he's, and he's raised me up to be a watchman in his vineyard. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, God, the Father, is set on getting this done. And he's going to do it. And he's going to do it through his covenant partners. He's not going to do it on his own. He left the church to go forward in his anointing to do his work in his stead. And what happens is every once in a while, in a generation, somebody gets so provoked that nothing matters but God's will. And so Father Nash and Praying Hyde are two examples. Hyde cried out to God, give me India, shake India. I mean, he died with his heart moved from one side of his chest to the other. One dear friend of mine is a great evangelist. He asked God one day, he said, why? Why did Praying Hyde suffer such a... A, a physiological effect from prayer and the Lord told him because he did the work of a hundred men by himself one guy one guy gets it one guy gets it everybody else is criticizing pointing fingers talking about what should have been what happened sometime long ago you're gonna have to get out of that realm understand God power is directed at bringing down the logics and the rational reasonings of men the natural mind is enmity against God can't be subject to him will not have the mind of Christ will not have the mind of spirit and will not get the results of heaven we want the results of heaven I want the results of heaven I'm going to tell you right now I've come to, once again tonight doing my job I'm a, I'm a sharp threshing instrument that has tea to thresh the mountains amen there's more than one way to get a mountain out of the way. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to hear. I just want you to respond. God has made it so easy. He's made it so willing. I mean, he made it so easy if we're just willing. God's made it so easy if we're just willing. If our heart's right with God, our heart responds to the sound. If our heart's not right with God, we reject the sound. And then we demand. We demand with our money. And we demand with our countenance. For the prophet and the minister to shut up and acquiesce to our will. The Father's just raised up some radical people right now. And ain't, no, there's no stopping them. There's no influencing them. There's nothing you can buy them with. They've been tried in the fire. They've been tested with everything that could come at them. And they're not budging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so blessed. I mean, we're in October, next this in October, the first of the month, we're gonna have Brother Yun, the heavenly man, here. And I'm just believing to reach to the Asian community like never before. And then right after that, about the 17th, 18th, and 19th, we're gonna have I Am Remnant with, with Pat. And it's a new move that God has just has raised Pat up in this thing to go and, and begin to, to, to speak this message, this word that the Lord put in his mouth. And literally tens of thousands of youth are coming into the kingdom. The, the cold, stale, frozen, young people who sit in churches and yawning the whole time, totally disinterested, suddenly are being touched by a fire of God because they're hearing and being moved by a radical call. And let me just tell you this. For people around me, it ain't going to be different. It ain't going to move you. Because you can grow, you, can, you know, you can anesthetize to it because it's already here. You can anesthetize to it. You with me? Yeah. You can anesthetize. Oh, I'm used to hearing that. And you go on living the same way, and it doesn't bring change. You're in danger when it don't bring change. You're in danger when I said it. You're in danger when it doesn't bring change. Sure. Father is not going to allow lifeless, passionless expressions to represent his holy name and the reality of his Amen. glory and the reality of his life. His life's too wonderful for that. His life is too awesome for that. Man, and, and people are going to look at me and they're going to decide whether or not Jesus is real. They're going to look at me and decide whether or not heaven is real. They're going to look at you and decide whether or not there is any reality to the gospel that you preach. Yes. And I'm telling you, the only way you and I are going to be able to in any way meet up to our responsibility is we're going to have to be full of the Holy Ghost. And Papa knew it, so he, therefore he said, I want you to go in all the world and preach the gospel, but first go get and do the power from on high. Right. Amen. Amen. So we say this, we look around and we say, Father, Lord of the harvest. Lord, we, we see that the harvest is plenteous. Raise up laborers to come into the harvest. That's how Jesus told us to pray. And we know he hears us. I know he hears us. I know, I know his ears are open to my prayers. I know his eyes are on me. I take good care of my wife. I don't speak deceit. I don't speak falsehoods. I don't speak betrayal against other people. That's guile. If you want to understand, Papa doesn't like guile. Just do yourself a real quick study on guile. You discover... It ain't a good thing. You don't want nothing to do with it, huh? 
And, and the bottom line of it is we find ourselves walking in a place with the Lord, just simply not relying on our own human ability and discipline, but relying on the Holy Ghost to help us, to strengthen us, so that we can do what God told us to do in His Word. He say, well, he's there keeping a watch on our mouth, saying, no, 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 no don't speak that. He, he really keeps a watch on our mouth. When the You know, somebody said, ah, those tongues. Yeah, it's tongues. It's to a tongue. It's, it's, the, it's a tongue set on fire of heaven. Hallelujah. Or you get a tongue set on fire of hell. Okay, so which one you want? <laughs> Somebody said, well, I get, I'm tired of all these people, you know, speaking evil. And the other, well, they need to get a tongue set, and they need to get salvation in the tongue, yeah. so to speak. Obviously, we know salvation is in the heart, right? Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. La <laughs> Out of the out of the belly, out of the, out of, out of the area of inspiration. <laughs> huh? Out of the, out of the... Out of the bubble up, the nabo in the Hebrew language, the bubble up, the nabo. Hallelujah. It's where I'm going to hear the mind of Christ. It's where I'm going to hear the reasonings of God. Somebody said to me, are you saying that we need to abandon all good sense? No. No, you don't need to abandon good sense. Okay? Don't drop the ball on your toe. It will hurt. Okay, don't abandon good sense. We're just talking about men going over into reasoning and logic when it comes to doing the things that God's called us to do because you're never going to figure out how to walk on the water and raise the dead to life again. You're never going to hear or understand through the rational uh, evaluation of a circumstance what Father wants you to do next. All that's going to be imaginations. I think that the one, one thing most said against God's people is imagination and that's why the power of God addresses that issue. Imaginations. We, we think that reasoning and logic is superior to imagination because we say imagination is just a fantasy. Well, mostly be reasoning and logic when it's ultimately bore out. It's just about the same fantasy. So here we are. We're, we're here tonight again. We're prophesying to the mountain. We're dealing with all the oppositions. We're dealing with all the hindrances. We're dealing with all people's opinions. But you know what? Pa ultimately, what Father does is he says, okay, okay, I'm going to step in now, and it's a, called a sovereign move of God, where God arises in the midst of us as in the days of old. Huh? He revives again His work as in the days of old. And when you can look back in the history of the church, and I love looking at the Wells revivals because you could almost set your clock to it. About every 30 years, there was another revival in Wells, where God would just step in in the midst of what was going on in the church and shake what we now call the UK. Evan Roberts, knowing this, and if you've never studied the, the uh, Welsh revivals, you should. And the, and the revivals of Scotland, you should. And Evan Roberts, knowing this, one day he says, he cries out to God and, and asks the pastor, he says, look, what do I got to do to be in one of these revivals? And the pastor just gave him a simple instruction, be in all the meetings. Don't miss any of the meetings. Set your heart on God and don't miss any of the meetings. A young boy of 12 years old did that. And God raised a young boy of 12 years old up to be a champion that radically shaped his generation. I'm telling you, dear people, Father's got the same call on you. You've got to get rid of all the other ideas about yourself. You're going to have to ask yourself, what do you believe about those things that God said concerning you in his word? And then you have to think, bring that up and compare it to what you believe about yourself because many times those are far, far apart from each other. Because we believe things about ourselves that other people have told us, that imaginations have told us, that Satan rails against us with his fiery darts. But the only way you can even begin to stop that is to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. And there is no way to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might without being full of the Holy Ghost. There's no way to be full of the Holy Ghost without your willingness to yield yourself to God. Just simple obedience of acknowledging who he is, that he's present, and what he's done for you, and saying it's true. Amen. It doesn't take much to have a move of God. Huh? I get raptured in the morning before coffee. I don't really drink coffee that much. More mate, but I get raptured in, in the morning before mate. Why? I just thank Him. I just give thanks to Him for being present in my life, to being here to keep me from all evil. 
I mean, before my eyes open, my mind is already saying, Lord, keep me from all evil. Why? Because I know the enemy of my soul is set on taking me out. He's rebellious. He's a liar. He doesn't believe I'm redeemed. He doesn't believe you're redeemed. He, don't be, he doesn't believe nothing of the truth. He was defeated 2,000 years ago, but he don't believe it. Not any of it. He doesn't believe it. And we're going to see one day, he's actually going to try to go get men, gather them together, and see if they can overthrow God. He's totally a whack case. If they get men together and overthrow God, he's totally, he's lost it altogether. Are you with me? And he's got enough power to absolutely, with his, with his craft, and with his instruments of iniquity to destroy your soul and my soul. Even though the least among us is far, is, is far greater than all the power of hell. Because we find ourselves in Jesus. He has to obey Jesus. Jesus is the one man who never sinned. He's the one man who in the flesh condemned sin in the flesh and destroyed all the works of Satan. And we're supposed to find ourselves in him. And the anointing was given us for one single purpose. This is the beginning. We find ourselves in him. I find myself in him. I find him in me. That is a reality. That is, that is the pit. That is the, that right there is, should be the United Pentecostal movement. <laughs> that right there. To know that the Father is in Jesus and that Jesus is in me. That I'm in him. Listen to me. This is a conditional promise. If you, Jesus said this, if you obey me, he said, then my Father will love you and will come make his dwelling. Now that's radical. That's radical because people say, wait, 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 wait. wait. You mean you got to do something to get Father love you? Isn't that, isn't that contradictory there in John chapter 14, 24? I guess that's verse 20. Isn't that contradictory to God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? No, no, no. God's love extended to all humanity. But that's not a relational love. We're talking about a relational love where I'm in him and he's in me and I'm one with him. He's one with me. My heart's united to fear his name. I love what he loves, hate what he hates. As a newborn babe, I'm being taught to move in all of the majesty and the splendor of his godliness and purity and holiness and glory in every good and perfect thing. Come on now. I tell you right now, I will prophesy till the church changes. I'm telling you right now. I'm coming at this with the fire of God. I mean, it, we, if we're going to ultimately be used by God, we're going to go through every persecution. We're going to go through every opposition. We're going to go through every slander. We're going to go through every trial. We're going to go through everything that could possibly push us down and overthrow us. But if we do it all to stand, stand, and won't be moved, Papa's going to get the last word. Amen. He's going to get the last word. Listen, if you don't think that Father is impressed by your passion, you need to start all over again because he's just a passionate God. He has asked David when David's dancing before the ark. God is a passionate God. He's dancing over you and making songs over you while people sit in the church. I've heard some, I heard, I mean, Joel Stockstill will be here November the 2nd. Joel has raised up the, the largest youth ministry in the United States of America. He's a, I think, he, I think he's fifth generation of, Minister's kid as well. And, and, and there is a common voice of things that, that God is saying. And, and we're hearing and looking at the church where people rise or stand up to worship God. And they stand there looking like a bunch of, of, of mummies. And, 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 and what do they call it? Mannequins. They're just lifeless. Lifeless. Sink lipping. Lip sinking rather. <laughs> Lip sinking um, a song of praise. I should say heart sinking. Huh? It's not coming from the belly. It's not coming of the spirit. Did you guys know that God doesn't ex accept praise from men? Did you know that? Did you know a strange fire? Did you know that? Did you know the only fire that is allowed to, build, to burn in God's temple is the fire that came down out of heaven? Did you know that? 
It's the only fire that's allowed in the holies of holies. It's the only fire that's allowed in the holy place. It's the only fire that's even allowed to be put on the brazen altar outside of the, outside of the sanctuary in the outer court. Did you know that? Did you know that Father doesn't want strange fire? And a strange fire comes around. And did you know that if there's any kind of alcohol mixed with a strange fire, you're going to end up like Nadab and Abihu? And did you know the church is walking around with a cup of judgment in their hand right now, talking about their Christian liberty? Because after all, Jesus uh, turned 120 bottles of, wa of water into wine. And boy, did they have a party. Nonsense. You never take anything that is evil and make it good. You can never take a wrong and make it right. It's lies. It's lies. I can cast a person who's, got, who's under the influence of alcohol, I can cast out the evil spirit and they can sober up because it's a demon spirit that gives the influence. Somebody said, oh, I just do it to relax. You relax it under the influence of a demon spirit. Listen to me. You relax it under the influence of a demon spirit. Oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You understand. And the physiological chemistry is the ethanol comes into your body and then ultimately it has this neurological effect and it gives you this sense of nonsense. You just took poison in your body and with the, with the, with the, with the, in, in, the imbibing of that poison, a demon spirit gave you a sense of, of good feeling. Until ultimately he wants to turn it into rage or lust or some other manifestation of whatever iniquity he wants to, he wants to develop because you're, under, you're a puppet on his string and you're under his power. And here we are. The whole Pentecostal movement is a guzzling. Well, see, the thing about it is, is Papa's raised up people that just ain't going to shut up. Amen. They're not going to stop. Amen. You're going to have to kill them to get them to be quiet. You, you, they, you, you, <laughs> you, there is no shutting them down. You can persecute them. You can slander them. You can do everything you want against them. But as short of death, you're not shutting them up. Because Father's going to have his way in the earth. He's going to magnify in the name of his only begotten Son in the midst of his glorious church. His glorious church is everything that expresses who he is. Because he's the definition of glorious. He's, he's the definition of glory. I want you to look with me here and understand here in John chapter 2 something that's very important for me to express to you. And, uh, and also in Luke chapter 2. And it's God setting things in order. When Father is about ready to do a move, when God the Father is about ready to break open with divine power and glory, He's got to set everything in order. And so I believe what I want to do is I want you to look with me quickly in Luke chapter 3 to start with. And I want you to see this. This is the way Father always works, Old Testament, New Testament. Millennial reign. Millennial reign. Somebody didn't, probably didn't get that. You know, he must reign until all of his enemies are subdued. Did you know that? Yeah. You know that he's going to rule the, rule the nations with a rod of iron, and so are his three companies of redeemed. Mm -hmm. God's got three companies of redeemed, 144,000, which will be redeemed as of the 12,000 tribes of Israel. And I'm not saying that they're the only ones of Israel that are redeemed, but during the tribulation, that's a company of the redeemed. All of the righteous dead that are part of the first resurrection from Abel until that day, they're the a company of the redeemed, right? And then the martyrs of the tribulation, they're a company of the redeemed. And all three companies, it's very clearly defined that we're going to rule with them with a rod of iron and we're going to smash the nations. We're going to smash rebellion. Why? Ultimately, it's all going to be set in order. Once it's set in order, according to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 24, he said, then it's made acceptable to the Father that the Father could come down and be all in all, and everything will be subjected to him. And the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. My goodness, that's going to be glorious. Hallelujah. Ha, ah, my nombotai shake. No, no matter where you at on the earth, you'll be able to see the light of the city. Hallelujah. Right on the horizon. Go up about 1,800 miles into the sky. Luripana, Extia Tulomosia, highest mountain, hallelujah, a series of mountains made up of seven mountains. And at the top of the mountain is the throne of Father. They're sitting there in His glory, surrounded by His mighty host, and from Him pours forth a river of life that then waters the whole earth with His glory. I'm living for a day. People, if you're lost and locked up in what's going on right now, you're missing out because Father's preparing us to rule and reign with Him forever. It's so much bigger than anything we've ever even begun to imagine. Everything that you're going 
going through right now, you under the potter's hand, one who loves you, who's yeah. dedicated and devoted to shaping you, to perfecting everything that concerns you, to keeping you so that you'll be holy and without blame before him on that day. What a glorious life you're living in. You should be very happy. You should be very excited. You should be full of faith. Ha -ha. You, should, you, should, you, should, you, should, you should have within yourself a resolve in your spirit to say, I belong to you, O God. To you alone, O Lord. I am yours to do only your will, Father. I'm on your side. I want nothing to do with your, the enemy of my soul and of your kingdom. Huh. I'm telling you, God's people are going to rise up. Catherine Kuhlman, Jack Cole, many of the other people of that generation, they said a great revival is coming. A great move of God is coming where there won't be any sin among God's saints nor sickness or disease in the camp. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And, and Jack Cole would say things like that and great miracles and signs and wonders would happen in the meeting. He would say that, things like that, and the power of God would fill the place. Catherine Kuhlman would say things like that and anointing would just absolutely captivate everybody. I mean, just literally take hold of you, seize your being where you couldn't move. Because it's true. It's true. I'm gonna, I want to call, once again, we have prayer going on to, uh, on Friday night, an hour before the study at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Saturday night, it'll be an hour of prayer, a couple hours of prayer, because start around 5, go to around 7-ish. Then all next week, the next week, just prayer every night that we don't normally do prayer. You have to get on your face. You have to begin to cry out to God. You're going to have to, you're, listen, Everybody talks about, oh, if you want to get in shape and you want to get your body right and you want to have, you know, a, a better physical condition, then you're going to have to be willing to participate with some radical change. And then they do it. And then if you want to get your mind right, you want to make a, give yourself a better mind, then you've got to do all these other things too. You've got to do all these exercises, a lot of discipline, and you've got to be devoted to the change. Hey, how about your spirit, man? How about your spirit, man? How about this life of Christ Jesus has been given you and me? Huh? It's like people, you know, it's like a new, the carrying the newborn baby around. The maturation that has to take place in the church, when you begin to have more than one or two people that are full of the Holy Ghost and know how to move in God, in the Spirit, the meeting is through the roof. It's through the roof. Take the men of God and the women of God that know how to flow in the anointing, scatter them out, and all they're doing is doing mission work. Bring them together in one room, it's explosive every time. That's why we do camp meetings. That's why we love gatherings together. That's why it's wonderful when we see people begin to mature in the things of the Spirit. They know how to keep themselves in the love of God. They know how to be built up in the faith. And hallelujah. And begin to give their whole being to praising God because they put God first. Father, see, listen, you see God in private, He's going to reward you openly. Come on, it's time to grow up. It's time to mature. It's time to take a hold of God. It's time to get out of the yabba dabba -doos and get over into something that moves mountains around in Jesus' name. It's true. Hallelujah. So look at this. This is what the Lord's doing. He wants to straighten you out. He wants to straighten us out. Hallelujah. All you and I have to do is be willing. But to get straightened out, you've got to be real hungry. Otherwise, you won't participate. <laughs> to get straightened out, you've got to be radically desperate for God. Because it's going to take that. Because he's going, to he's going to redefine humility to you. He's going to redefine submission to you. Thank you, the most humble person on the face of the earth, and find out they ain't even close, man. As soon as you start crying out to God, say, Father, teach me to walk in the humility, the beauty of your humility, the beauty of your lowliness, the beauty of your meekness, whatever it takes. Start talking to Father like that and get ready. Get ready because you're going to think you're having all kinds of problems. Get ready, because you're going to think that everything is caving in on you. No, 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 no. It's the molding hand of God. It's the corrective hand of God. You, now, now we're going to see whether you're going to buck up against it, whether you're going to rise up and begin to retaliate, and get all upset, and get all offended, get all mad, get all w wondering why it is got to, things have got to go as they're going for you. No, no, no. Get your hands up in the air and start praising God for his goodness because before honor is humility, before glory, before the authority of heaven, somebody just learned how to give themselves over to the molding hand of God. He's going to get things straightened out before he's going to use you. I said he's going to get things straightened out before he's going to use you. 
I know that doesn't go against a popular belief, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's a biblical belief. He prepares us unto every good work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time we get rid of all these half measures. It's time we get rid of just a little bit of anointing to have a little bit of a word of knowledge every once in a while. I'm going to tell you right now, you know, people talk about, hey, it's wonderful to be able to be gathered around all those, my, those that great company of mighty men that are standing around, around his throne. He give you a place to stand among all those who are there standing with him. Well, let me tell you something better than that. You ready? Just to have the privilege of being with him. Just be having him. Not necessarily being in the company of the mighty, just being with him. And when, when, when this, these things begin to take place in your heart, in your life, in your affections, your passions, your emotion, you demand them for yourself, then you start demanding them for your loved ones because you want them to have the good things. And as you begin to demand them for yourself and demand them for those that are around you, demand them for your church, what happens is God goes to begin, he goes to working. He goes to bring everything into agreement because we, as a word, give him permission to. I give you permission, Father, to straighten me out. Hallelujah. I, I give you permission, oh God, to do whatever you have to do in order to use me, Father. I just want to be used by you. I want to learn how to hear. I want to learn how to listen. I, 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 you know, I have a lot of ministry friends, and many of them take it unto themselves to make sure that I'm corrected because <laughs> they are dedicated to my perfection. And I love their passion, right? So fine, it's fine with me. And there's sometimes, you know, we get around friends. You know how friends are. You, you know, sometimes it can get a, little, get a little out of hand. But you know what I've done? I've given myself to a discipline. I always hear the, I always hear the Father speak. I said, I'm just obedient. I just listen. I'm always listening to the Father. So I take, I receive that from the Lord. And what happens, it doesn't take long, and Father begins to correct everybody that is around you. Because when you're taking things from Him, He's going... He knows how to straighten everybody out who's messing with you wrong. He does. He can straighten everybody out. Listen, I'm telling you, if you want to hear the voice of God, if you want to learn how to hear God speak to you, then you're going to have to listen to those who he speaks through. He speaks through those whom he has purposed and set aside in an office. And the office, is if, it's, if it's reverenced, and if there's anything that's got to go on in the church, his reverence has got to come back. People eating peanuts and drinking Dr. Pepper in the meeting has got to stop. Yeah. Huh? People doing whatever it is that they want to do when worship's going on. Somebody needs to take them and throw them out. Truth. Truth. It's the first part of Jesus' ministry. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He makes it. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you. He makes a whip. He makes, I don't know where he got the whip because you're not allowed to bring any cords or clubs into the tabernacle. But he got himself some whips together. I don't know what he did. He went jerking belts off of people or what? <laughs> Maybe some of those cages were bound with cords and he started busting them up and he made a whip and he whipped everything, animals included, humans and animals, smack. Somebody said, how can a loving Jesus do that? Because he's a loving Jesus full of a zeal for Father. He's full of the judgments of life and truth. Somebody says, you don't judge. I'm not judging. Father's judged. He's already made the judgment. It's passed. I've come declaring those things which he said. If I don't declare his judgments, then I'm found to be a liar. Jesus came with the zeal of the Lord. It consumed him. He's getting ready to do things that have never been done on planet Earth, and he's going to make sure everything's straightened out first. He's going to make sure everything is in order. Somebody said, sometimes you look real angry. Well, you ought to see Jesus. His eyes are like a flame of fire. That's really angry. It's not little flames. It's anger. It's anger. It's true. It's true. Exodus 32, I guess it was verse 4. The Lord comes down off the mountain, and Israel has now profaned his glory and profaned his presence, and they made a golden calf and committing a fornication with one another. Huh? He said, stand back and let my wrath burn. That's what he says. And he, I love him. I think he's great. I think he's wonderful. Today, yesterday, the same. He's the same forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. He's not changing. I think he's wonderful. I don't want to be around anybody else. I'm on his side. Whatever he wants to do, I'm with him. He's so full of love and goodness and mercy, but you're not going to mess around with his holy things. You're not going to mess around with his holy things. You're not going to touch his holy things. 
and abuses holy things. They're too sacred. And I think that's wonderful. Hallelujah. And I tell you right now, when God's people are walking in love, they'll be watching out for one another, and they'll see each other as sacred, and they won't be committing fornication with one another and adultery, and they won't be abusing one another because the, the love will cause them to be protective of that which is, that which is sacred and that which is sac sanctified and that which belongs to the Father. A love will move them to a place of protection instead of abuse. The satanic realm. Huh? They all sat down to eat and rose up to play, Paul said, concerning people eating of the table of the Lord and the table of devils. And I see more of that going on in the house of God than it can even be expressed. It's going to stop. It's going to stop. Father straighten things out. And, 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 and he begins in the smallest little places and it burns like a fire. It burns like a fire that cannot be stopped. And it consumes everything. It consumes everything for his glory. It becomes a minka offering to him, a whole burnt offering. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I feel that, I feel, I feel a glorious, sovereign moving of God. I feel something that is happening that you, you just want to in every way hide yourself in the anointing hide yourself in the glory because father is about to pass by in an amazing way here in the united states of america yes. he is Amen. he is there's no doubt in my mind that america cr may, went to a crossroads at that crossroads a decision was made and the and that impacted the prosperity of this nation the security of this nation and the wrong decision was made and America sided with iniquity. And, but you know what? In the midst of all of that, Father is going to do in his loving kindness and tender mercies that which is unimaginable. There's going to be such a great coming in of a harvest. There's going to be such demonstration of power and signs and wonders. I love the idea of there being no food so we can multiply a few loaves and fishes. Hallelujah the whole company of people. Ha, a rabo sake. I love the idea of bombs falling on San Diego and just walking through the fire and not being burned and being able to pray protection over people who's willing to hear. I mean, somebody says, you're nuts. That sounds really crazy. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the bottom line of it is, things are getting ready to come down and people don't understand that Putin wants a fight. He's just saying, come on. He doesn't believe anybody's going to budge. And if anybody makes a budge, he's got his nukes right outside in the international waters, and sometimes they come into our territorial waters. It's reality, people. Might as well wake up. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just telling you what's going down. And I'm not going to get into politics and I get a prognostication about what's going to happen. I know what the Word of God says, and I know where we're ultimately going. I know what Satan ultimately is going to be given the right to do. And we see the whole world moving fast in that direction. But I see what's going on in heaven, and that's all I want to see. My dad called me up this morning from the Philippines, and he's asked me about this thing, that thing, and the other thing. I said, Dad, what does it even matter? We know that Satan will control the whole economy by Revelation chapter 14. We know whether he's using an organized group or an unorganized group, he's behind the whole thing. What we know is something far better than what's going on in the camp of Satan, what's going on in the realms of men. We know what's going on in, this, in heaven. We know what's going on in the mind of Christ. We know the strategies of God. We know our divine purpose. It can't be polluted with the leaven of Pharisees and Herodians, which is religion and politics. Let's just do what God's called us to do. Let's rise up in a greater anointing. Let's rise up in a greater authority, and let's get this thing done. Let's quit patty caking around, playing around, holding on to our own life, saying well, we've surrendered all. When in reality, we've surrendered half at best. Are you listening to me? I'm tired of singing the song, I surrendered 50%. Come on, I'm tired of singing, oh, half for you, Lord, half for me. I surrender half. I'm tired of singing that. Come on, man, it's time to get consecrated here. In Jesus' name. Time for us to stop spending our life on ourselves. I'm, I'm certain that there's not many of God's people that even can measure a, a daily denial of themselves. They don't even know what that means. What does it mean to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Him? Everybody's just lusting for more money. They made merchandise of His house. Huh? You should feel the zeal on the inside of me right now. Arr. 
This stuff's got to stop. It's going to stop. Amen. It stopped with me. Yeah. Stopped with me. Yeah. Stop. I'm saying I'm the hinderer of iniquity. I'm saying, yeah. no! Yes. No. no more! There's one dear friend of mine who says, I serve a restraining on order on you, Satan. You cannot have the United States of America. My family, my community, my church. Somebody's going to have to get themselves some authority seeing Jesus has it all in heaven and earth and we're seated together with him in it. Somebody's going to have to start telling Satan what he cannot do and what he can do. Huh? All he can do as far as, as far as I'm concerned is shut up and go away. <laughs> okay? That's all he can do. When I first heard my dear friend Carlos Anaconda address Satan, I thought, my goodness, are we allowed to do that? <laughs> Say that and I destroy you right now. I destroy your work. I render you powerless. Take your filthy hands off the property of God. And then to watch people just get set free by the power of that wonderful name of Jesus because somebody believes in the authority that has been given to us when we were given power from on high. Hallelujah. Uh, a, the power from on high, literally. Pop's power, God's power, Father's power. Yes. Hallelujah. Mokasitena, Lipona, Ikishipona, mountain moving power. Hallelujah. The er, er, world shaping power. Life changing power, most important. Come on, it's time for us to enter into the harvest. You say, follow the Lord of the harvest, raise up laborers for the harvest. Then you say, Lord, raise me up. And then you don't ask him to raise you up in some way different from what he's described. You ask him, Lord, raise me up with the Holy Ghost and power and demonstration of the Spirit with mighty signs and wonders and miracles because that's what you have commanded. Huh? For God's people to understand the will of the Father and then to command it in this world around them. I'm commanding these things to be Hallelujah. I know, what it, I know what it's like to have a mountain stand there and won't listen to you. I know what it's like to have uh, church people sit there and won't pray. I know what it's like to have... I can go on. God's people get in the song service and not rejoice. I'll still scream at that mountain. I'll scream at that mountain. I'll tell it to obey the living God, to conform to the image of the Son. I'll demand it so. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And people won't like it at first, especially in the United States of America, because you know what? We all, you know, we all bleed red, white, and blue, and we're all, you know, in charge. But we're in charge of the wrong things. We're all independent in our minds instead of dependent. We need to be dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and in charge of God's heavenly mandates to execute His will in the earth. Not to go ahead and be in charge of our own independent ideas and wills and champion what we want and what we believe is right. But everyone's heart should be conformed to the will of the Father to believe and to be willing to do whatever He says, no matter how different it is from the way you normally would do things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what we're getting ready to do? I'm going to read these verses of Scripture here in just a few minutes. We're getting ready to just take the meetings outdoors. We're going to have all the meetings outdoors. I figure we're going to have two, 3,000 people in the meeting when Pat comes. And I, we probably won't have that many when Brother Yun, the heavenly man, comes, but we're, I'm going to go after Asia like we've never gone after Asia, Asian community here in this area. We need your help to do that. Human resources are very important to get the job done. Huh? I'm going to get... If you know young people that don't know anything about consecration and holiness, I'm telling you right now, you get the word out. You don't have to convince them. Just bring them to the meeting. They'll have an encounter with God. All of a sudden, they'll understand something about consecration and holiness. You can't live in this world and be right with God. You can't be under the influence of the spirit of this world and be able to hear what God has to say and be moved by the spirit of the Lord. You're going to have to make a clean break. How many of you know there's a whole lot of change needs to take place in your life? Yes. What do you think, about 80%, 90%? What do you think? I tell you, it's a lot. Well, if there's that much change needs to go on in your life, how devoted are you to having that change go on in your life? And the change I'm talking about is not a new heart and a new spirit. The Lord gave us that. It's a miracle new birth. He gave to us the likeness and perfection of Jesus. 
I'm talking about the change that comes from being willing to be obedient and grow in grace and grow in the Word and grow in the things of the Spirit and grow in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus hits the ground running, man. He, he shows up to Peter, tells Peter what his name is. Huh? He, says, he, call, he tells Simon who he is and who his house is and who he's going to be. And next thing he sees Nathaniel and tells him where, you know, what his character's like and what he's going to do with the rest of his life. And then he sees a woman with, at the well and tells her who she is. And she says, he told me everything I've done all my life. Huh? What a ministry. Come on now. That's because he left logic and reason if he was ever in it and stepped over into a realm of the mind of the spirit, the mind of the things which Father knows. When you begin to evaluate the ministry and life of Jesus, which is an expression of who the church is supposed to be and what the church is supposed to do and what we as individuals are supposed to cooperate with, all of a sudden you're going to get yourself a Holy Ghost burden. You're going to go, oh my, oh my goodness. Who is, of course, Father is our goodness. Lord, help me, change me. Lord, what does it take for me to shut down these imaginations that are standing in the way of the beautiful expressions of your knowledge and your wisdom? Huh? Of your revelation and your doctrine and your discernment. Praise God for all the revelatory gifts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. His divine compassion that begins to move you with such a heavenly uh, unction that the worst kinds of, of situations are, are healed and Miracles take place and lives are changed. I'm desperate for these things. If you're not desperate for them, you can't have them. When you're hungry, you're desperate for food. When you're thirsty, you're desperate for drink. There's no passion known to man as the, as the passion for thirst. None. Many people don't know it because they've never had to go long without water. But go, go just try and give an experiment. Don't go for more than two days, though. Get in the third day, you start running some risk unless it's a divine thing. Huh? You get really thirsty. It's a desperate passion. It will consume your every thought. You won't be able to sleep. You can't sleep. When you get too thirsty, you can't sleep. It consumes your every thought, all your energy, everything about your life, every cell of your body, every desire of your, of your being, every passion of your, of your heart, every... every thinking thing of yourself needs water. The Lord says, get thirsty. I'll open up heaven. Father's going to keep his promise. I'll open, I'll open up heaven. I'll cause, I'll cause glory to fall upon your soul. These are the days of the latter rain, the early and the latter. We're supposed to be asking for rain. Father's waiting for the precious of the fruit of the earth to come forth. That precious fruit of the earth is the ministry and life of Jesus Christ the fullness of his love and glory and power revealed because they will not believe unless they see signs and wonders. And Jesus didn't say that with a critical tone. He said that as an absolute, this is a necessity, this is God's grace, this is what men must have in order for the stronghold to be broken off their life. Things got to get straightened out. Luke chapter, and I, and I want you to just commit yourself to getting straight, being, being straightened. Amen. We are the restorer of the path to dwell in. Hallelujah. We're those who God has called to raise up the ancient dwellings that have become ruins. The place of habitation with God. People look at us, they don't understand what we're saying, they don't understand what we're doing. They can hear all that Satan's saying about us, all of his lies he speaks against us, all of his scandals that he tries to create around us. But they cannot hear, but they will. Everybody will hear because Satan only gets to do his, his trick for just a little while. He can only confuse the minds of men. I pray that Satan will not be able to confuse your mind, that he will not have any place to whisper in your ear, to speak lies in your thoughts, to create vain imaginations against the spirit of the Lord and the things of the kingdom. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, you listen to me. I'm telling you right now, it is on Father's docket list to shake Japan. I'm telling you, there's nothing of ancestral worship or imperialism or the sorceries of the nation that will remain. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You don't have to do nothing but stand there and worship God and do the good stuff. Just praise Him. It's just, you know, we're going to go out to battle. Oh, don't we need some, you know, 
some special weapons and a whole lot of skills. No, just stand there and worship me. Amen. Hallelujah. As it is written, Luke chapter 3, verse 4, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. This is what God's going to do before there's appearings of Jesus, before the appearing of Jesus, for the manifested word, before the great moving of his miraculous outpourings. Yeah, this is talking about the greatest event of all, the appearing of the Lord Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, what people don't realize is that there are many parousias, there's many movings, there's many appearings. He's right here in the midst of us, and he wants to manifest. He's right here in the midst. I'm with you always. Behold. Uh, I'm with you always, even unto the, or rather, be a good cheer. I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's here, wherever two or three are gathered together in the authority of his name. Uh, uh, and not, 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 not just being there with the little shingle that says we Christian. Uh, no, no, of the authority of his name, born of the Spirit, under his divine order. He's standing in the midst of us. He's here. Jesus is here. The power of God's here. Power God is, is present to touch you, to change you. He's working on you right now. He's conditioning your heart. He's, he's creating resolve within your will. He's opening up your eyes to see. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the stuff that you're in, listen to me, the stuff that you're in is blinding you every day. And you don't know it. Because the, I, I, you don't have to wait till you get into the tribulation to, be, to, uh, to understand the effect of overcoming by the word of your testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and loving not your life even unto the death. And so many people walk around in their workplace and you have no testimony of Jesus Christ, thus you are overwhelmed by the powers of darkness. you under their influence, and they will influence you to whatever degree they allow to. And, f- and, and what I've seen in much of the church, most people are, are fully impacted by his influence and they end up in all kinds of lasciviousness and iniquity those things that God says I will destroy that soul in hell for doing true 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 if you don't think pornography will destroy your soul in hell I'm telling you it's a miracle to get rid of it because because the Proverbs God said in his wisdom he that enters in at her, in, enters in at her door goes down into hell and never returns People think they can play around with sin and it's going to be okay because God is so an easy touch. He's an easy touch. He's so merciful and he's so forgiving. But sin will destroy you, will harden your heart. Satan plays for keep. He's a master of his craft. When you open up the door by permission of your will to allow him to influence you, there's no end to it. You've got to find a place of cutting it off. Getting radical and cutting it off. God gives you a lifetime to repent. Isn't that beautiful? I hope it doesn't take you a lifetime. <laughs> I hope you get it done, in Jesus' name. Because you know what real repentance is? You know what repentance finds itself in? I'm going to say it again. I'm a, you're going to hear me say it. Repentance finds itself in change. Repentance, the power of repentance is to be made a new creature, to be changed, to get a new heart, a new spirit. I put my spirit on the inside of you to have the, become a possessor of the divine nature. A new creation, everything old is gone. Satan has no rights, no claim, no power. You, you have no, you, there's no reason why you have to respond to one of his temptations, one of his lies. There's nothing about your nature that should be, have any affinity towards him. But that, that glorious thing that God has done in our lives has been so eroded and so attacked and so neglected that people have been overrun by the camp of darkness. I say, stand up now. I say, stand up. Stand up now. In Jesus' name. Take a hold of the power of God, because I tell you, you'll be successful. Father wants to get things straightened out around here. Father wants to get things straightened out in your life. Father wants to have a place where he can begin to say, yep, this, this this is what I want. This is my church. This is what I want. This is the kind of love. This is the kind of submission. This is the kind of humility. This kind of brokenness. This is the kind of living in heaven, not knowing men after the flesh, but knowing everybody after the things of the Spirit, the new creation which has been brought forth in Christ Jesus. Come on, man. Get out of earth and get into heaven. Amen. 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 It's like A.B. Simpson said, heaven is Jesus and Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven today.
the Lord says this, every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, the crooked shall be made straight, the rough way shall be made smooth. Amen. And all flesh shall see the glory or the salvation of God. Father's going to get things straightened out before he begins to reveal the beauty and the splendor of all that he has. People are going to get, people are going to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. People are going to consecrate themselves to God so that, you know, he doesn't, man, he's not, ultimately, imagine this, his beauty, his splendor is manifested in your life. People are touched by the glory of heaven. Then you don't have any resolve to serve in the Lord and they just so happen to see you in the bar with your, you know, doing some terrible thing or, or, or in some other situation in life completely overcome by the activities of demon power. His name's profane that way. Father's not going to profane, profane his name. He's dedicated to glorifying the name of Jesus, not profaning his name. I, tonight, I want you to just hear one thing. I want you to get stirred up for the purpose of seeing the name of Jesus glorified in your life. That's why the Holy Spirit has come, to glorify the name of Jesus in your life. That's what Father is dedicated to, glorifying the name of Jesus. Father has given to us an anointing. He's given us this wonderful miracle. People, people saying, I, I, I love the anointing. I want more of anointing. All you're saying is that you're willing to participate in a greater relationship. You just want to, you want to know him. You want to, you, want to, you want to be pleasing to him in everything. Somebody said, are you saying you're sinless? I say, I don't want to sin. Somebody said, you perfect? I want to be perfect for him. It's a totally different argument. Yes. Yeah. I'm dedicated to, to allowing God to be glorified in my life. I'm not interested in me. I'm interested in him. I'm not interested in living my life. I want to live his life. That is an active participation of our will, it's a consecration of our hearts because we're not gonna live out our life and live out his at the same time. We're gonna deny ourselves. Yes. That means when you're mad and upset, you feel offended, it don't make it, it doesn't mean nothing. Amen. You just laugh at that. You just laugh at that. The Father will give you wisdom to see through it all and change everything. Somebody's hollering at you about something, you just, you just begin to delight and enjoy their passion. <laughs> that they're so moved by with such zeal. Huh? Father, I fill you with wisdom and counsel and might and strength. Parents, get your children around, pray over them, just lay hands on them. If your children don't know how to receive from the anointing if they're bored in church, I'm not talking about forcing them to do things. I'm not talking about spanking them into heaven. I'm just talking about you just getting, getting into their life, getting in their life, talking with them, laying hands on them, bless them, praying for them, talking them through, asking them what's going on, helping them understand their need to learn how to hate evil and to love righteousness, helping them understand the forces of hell that are coming against them to try to destroy their life and their soul. Help them to understand the beauty and the splendor of the opportunity that God has given them in the ranks of his kingdom as sons and daughters of the Most High. People, you, if you want to you, you want to have a greater move of God in your life, you need to prepare for it. You want to have a greater manifestation of the things of the Spirit in your life, you're going to have to make room for it. You want to be part of this great revival that Father is right now, it's already started. Started. is on the way. Hallelujah. Then devote your whole life to it. And, if you, and it, as you do, I'm not going to say if you do, because you're going to do it. Yeah. And as you do, Father will open your eyes. You'll be able to see more plainly what's going on. All that's going to happen is you're going to just get that much more excited. You're going you're to buy in that much more. And in that, in that, in that, in that realm, the Word of God abides in you. And you will defeat Satan at every point. You'll be strong because the Word of God abides in you. It's our whole meaning and your whole purpose is about living the life of Jesus and doing the work, work of the Father. Mm -hmm. To do His work. Amen. All the stuff that self-interest demanded, all the access that Satan had to you because you were pursuing your own things, those doors are shut. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Irrist. Irrist.
Maktena. Rispa. It's received. Nakteli. Feel that? Rispa. Extila na matina. Nikate. Rustapai. Luptoni isi. Lerest. Blaktaili. Some of you need to get right with God. You need to get right with the Lord. You got things going on in your life, you know they're not right. I'm going to tell you right now. You know them because I can see them. If I can see them, you can see them. So, and anyway, it's no condemnation. I just speak in general. It's no condemnation. It's a call Amen. of salvation. Amen. Huh? It's here. Behold. Papa sees what's going on. Just repent. Amen. And it's took on a mossy. It's cleansed. It's washed away. It says, receive right now. Hallelujah. Just be filled up. Be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being right now. Hallelujah. Zolo Monde. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Basta Baranepe. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Here's what's going to happen to you. And here's what you're going to ask the Lord to do tonight. Everything about your life's changing right now. In terms of maturing. You're going to grow right now. God's going to strengthen you to grow right now. I watch people basically call folks up and have one leg shorter than the other and their leg grew out, okay? Well, your spirit's going to grow right now. I don't do growing legs. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing in for, for legs that aren't there appearing, but tonight we're doing growing spirits, being strengthened by the spirit in your inner being, in other words. You know what happens? Listen to me, listen to me, listen. You know what happens when you strengthen in your inner being? When you strengthen in your inner man, you know what happens to you? You're given the capacity to know what is the height, the breadth, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, to be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do separately, abundantly, and more than what you can think or ask, or beyond all that you can think or ask, according to the power that is at work on the inside of you. Now I want you to just get ready. I want you to just tell me if you can sense any power at work on the inside of you. <laughs> I want you just to be ready now. I want you to be ready. I don't want you to be thinking it through. I want you to just be ready. The Lord Jesus has drink for you tonight. I want you to be ready. We want the power of God that is on the inside of you to begin to work right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If there's, been, if there's been indifference in your life, if there's been lukewarmness in your life, even if it's been for a day, and God forbid if there's been sin in your life, let's repent, let's, get, let's, get, let's, let's, let's renounce that thing. Let God, the Holy Ghost, cause you to hate that thing right now. In Jesus' name. Let the Spirit of the Lord begin to move upon you at this very moment for change, measurable change, quantifiable, quantifiable change. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In, Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pray for a few people here because I just the Lord's just laid on my heart. The Lord's going to begin to work to increase the expression of the Holy Ghost in your life. And so I'm just going to call a few of you out. And um, so, Duane, I want you to come. And uh, 
Kristen, I want you to come. Come here. Just going to stand up here. And now, I'm, I'm going to pray for them that the expression, the authority, the power of God will increase in their life. And, and I'm talking about, when I was talking about the expression of the things of God, I'm talking about the manifestation of the Spirit. I'm talking about the authority of prayer, um, the diversity and the authority of tongues, the sound of heaven. Now, I'm willing, I'm willing to pray for anyone else, but right now, these are the two that the Lord's laid on my heart. So, if there's something that's going on here in God and you want it, I just want you to understand, you don't have to ever be left out. You understand? Because God's not, Father's not leaving anyone out. There's plenty enough for everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord's not on a budget. He's not like running short. He don't have to manufacture some more and you got to wait because he's on back order. Hallelujah. He gives liberally. Withholds nothing from anyone. It's, it's okay. It's good that you're on ready, but thank you, Jesus. And Dwayne, tonight, listen to me, tonight you're going to, there's going to be a maturity in your life. There's going to be a change in your life. There's going to be a resolve in your life tonight. Father's going to give you boldness, number one, in your spirit. You're going to have boldness. Not in moving with men, moving with Him. The expression, the things of the Spirit are going to be heard come from your life. There's not going to be a struggle anymore. Yoke's going to be removed. Freedom's going to be found. A flow is yours. A flow. <laughs> Holy Ghost flow. Daniel, come here just a sec. Holy Ghost flow. See, there's this word of God that says, deep calls on the deep. There's a deep moving of the Spirit of God. That as we walk with him, it goes deep into our spirit. It comes right up out of our belly. Now in Jesus' name, change. Emily, come here, please. Bring your boys, would you? Your house is coming into divine order tonight. Just good news. <laughs> There's holiness in your house. See, in God's company, there's holiness on everything. There's holiness on the riders and hallelujah. Holiness on the crown and on the bells. And, come here, because this seat, look. You know, the, the enemy tries, come here. The enemy tries to put claims on us. He has no right to do it. You listen to me. He had, there's influences that Satan imposes upon us that we can easily justify. Sickness and disease is just one realm of it. Because we can take on somebody else's offense, we can believe somebody else's opinion. And opinions, literally, the, word for, the Greek word for heresy is actually opinions. We're going to have to really start living by the Word of God if we want to be clean free of all these other influences that would try to rob us of who we're supposed to be as a representative of God speaking His Word. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this anointing of the Holy Ghost coming forth from Dwayne and Eve. In Jesus' name. Such a demonstration of the Spirit and power. Such a demonstration of spirit and 
I break off this affliction. Now. Now! Touch, touch the men here, Lord. Touch Wesley. Touch Noah. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, in Jesus' name. Just lift, lift your hands towards heaven. John, come stand by. And it, that is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. This is the hardest thing for people to get in the kingdom. It's the hardest thing. Your ideas won't work. What you think isn't right. This is hard. This is hard. This is difficult. Rightly so. You've been trying your whole life to make a good grade and finally figure it all out. To come into the kingdom, the Lord said, the Lord, the Lord says, that's, that's not, that doesn't work. Now, what I want you to do is, I just want you to quiet yourself because the Lord's, look, just quiet yourself. Because the Lord's going to bring the Lord's going to bring forth something much deeper in the expressions of His Spirit. When you hear His voice, just one time you hear His voice. If you could just when I'm I'm asking Father for His mercy to allow you to do this, because you hear His voice just one time, the majesty of it, the beauty of it, the splendor of it. From that day forward, you have a new. A whole new threshold, if you would, of what sound should be coming out of your life. Are you with me? You understand what I'm trying to say? When you hear the sound and the beauty of His voice, you'll always just want to lay hold on the reproduction of that, if you would. You want nothing less. Listen, if there's anything that the church of Jesus Christ must hear, you must hear it. You must listen to me. I'm talking to you, those of you on the web, watching me on YouTube, sitting in this place. God's people need to start walking in the life of Jesus. The church needs to receive the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, well, pastor, that's fundamental to being born again. Yes, it is. But the reality of it is, is we find ourselves living out an expression that is far less than the life of Jesus, and that cannot be allowed anymore. And it starts when you wake up in the morning. And it's as simple as you saying, Holy Spirit, lead me. I don't want to have my control of my own life anymore. I want to do what you want me to do. Take hold of my life. I'm yours. It, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. Oh, what a life. What a glorious life. I'm going to tell you. If you give yourself to these things that I just described about the life of Jesus, you will be part of the most radical change in culture in the church that can even be imagined. Because it is a radical change. It's a radical departure from the religion that's going on in the house of God today. And Jesus stands at the door of your heart. Listen to me. There's people in here you've not engaged. You've not found fulfillment. You've not found this life. You've not found this glory. You've not found this ecstasy. You've not found this joy of salvation. And Jesus is standing at your, the door of your heart right now and he's knocking. You don't have to find him. He's found you. He's pleading with you and he's begging you. And it's time for you to stop. Open up the door of your heart and let him come in.
that will replace all of your theology and ideology because I'm telling you theology and doctrines of men don't amount to anything if the theology and the doctrine doesn't result in the glory and the goodness and the manifest love of God being revealed in your life it's nothing if it doesn't result in authority over Satan and sin it's nothing If it doesn't result in the power of Jesus Christ being a living expression through you it's nothing it's just ideas just something that people use to argue with each other over Tonight, Jesus stands at the door of your heart and he's knocking. He's banging on your heart's door. All you have to do is open up. Father, we pray for such a Holy Ghost conviction to return to the church. Yes, Father. Let me just say this. My dad, in his generation, they told me about great Holy Ghost conviction that was in the church. They were all radical preachers in that day, back in the 40s and the 50s. In the 60s. They said something happened in the 60s. Where it was as though Holy Ghost conviction that had always been in the church that they had known from the very beginning was gone that a rebellion had swept the land. And see, it wasn't so much that the rebellion had swept the land in the secular world, that, that it made ch kids rebel against their parents and society and government like never before, that made women rise up and rebel in a woman's movement on a scale that had never been seen, just, on, just one rebellion after another after another. But it got in its influence into the church. And what and see, we don't have a contrast, you see, because this is all maybe this is all you know. Maybe you just was came into the kingdom two, three, four, five years ago. Maybe even ten years ago, maybe twenty years ago. You don't even have this contrast. You don't know what I'm talking about. But they knew. Because they all about dead now. They all gray head, old gray haired old men now. My dad called me this morning, FaceTimed me on laying in his bed, you know, and he's like, he's like as old as Methuselah now. And I, he's laying in his bed, and I'm saying, Dad, what are you doing laying down? Are you dying or something? He said, no, no, it's just 1 o'clock in the morning. I was laying down, so he got up, you know. I said, get, get up. I don't want to look at you laying in that position. <laughs> See, I, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I sit around hearing these stories. I was old enough to remember how that when the smallest little bit of altar call was given, People came under Holy Ghost conviction. When somebody said, Jesus, stand at the door of your heart knocking, that everybody didn't matter. It's like everybody's head went down. They're crying out to God. Uh, uh, you know, saint and sinner alike, young and old. Because the Holy Ghost conviction was so thick. What we've got to do is we've got to be devoted to seeing that wonderful working of the Holy Spirit have freedom again in our lives and in our services in, 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 in the expressions of who we are we got to get rid of the nonsense of our own pur purposes and issues and whatever it is that's going on that stirs a different kind of atmosphere than the one that God the Holy Ghost has brought we don't have it amen it's, we're going to have it because some of us can't give no rest day and night until everything that Father said should be is. So right now in the name of Jesus, the things of the Spirit begin to Come deeper in your life this night. Ethrophan. In the name of Jesus, I speak growth into your life. <laughs> Be strengthened now, ability to cast down imaginations now in Jesus' name. To be able to walk in the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ. There is a 
there is a beginning point in this, dear people, you must understand. We have to look at the fact that God has given these things liberally to us, but Satan tries to run interference against what God would do. He tries to stop what God would do. And therefore, we have to be willing to receive the divine power and ability that God has given to us to effectively deal with those interferences, and one of them is imaginations. It is the singular biggest problem and ailment and, and disease of the church today. You effectively take the power of God, the God power. I know King James said, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. The Greek expression, dudumastantheo, which literally is God power. Or power of God. We had the power of God to deal with imagination. And what we do is we just simply say no. No, we say, we, we do not allow it. We stop it. Now, I think one of the best things to understand about the power of God is how to hook up with the Holy Ghost. Not sit there and scream at an imagination, oh, I don't want this thought, thought, get out of my head, wrestling with it that way. Are you with me? Just praying the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Just praise him and give thanks to him. The enemy, the enemy is going to make, come here. The enemy is going to, come here. The enemy is going to lie and cheat and steal and curse and tell you how terrible and unable and unworthy and everything else. Huh? That's what he does. Did you know that? Just don't listen. Believe what God says. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Everybody stand with me. Stand. Listen. I, I, I've, got to, I've got to get something across to you. Listen to me. Listen to me. Everybody, listen very carefully to me. Dwayne, everybody, listen to me. What Father does is so sacred. It's so sacred. It's got to become sacred in our heart. It's sacred. Well, everything the Father's doing is sacred. He's just, he never steps out of the sacred. In other words, he never steps out of the holy. He never, he never steps out of the realm of that which is pure. Just pure. And that, the basis of that is just having a, a heart that's pure. It's having a heart that's true. In other words, I'm not here for a pretend. I'm not here for a show. I'm not here for something, you know, for myself. I'm here because I want God. I want the things he says he has for me. I want to do what he wants me to do. I'm tired of doing it my own way. That's pure. That's true. When it's there. And, and that's reaching in to that which the Father's providing. You're going to get all the good things that he has for you. How's the little one? In Jesus' name, authority in your house, protection in your house. Now, you sit all night. You see a little more. Come, come, Michaela, Jacqueline. Father, I thank you for this anointing. Surapa ese. Surapa ese te. Surapa ese te ete. Surapa ese te yote.
<laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the Nasakoya prayer. In Jesus' name. Right now. In, in closing, in closing, in closing, in closing, I just want to say this. There's an identity that Christ Jesus has given us that Father wants us to embrace. And there's an identity that this world has given us, which then would compose everything, be composed of everything that has been around us and influenced us our whole life from our peers to our parents, society as a whole, to the realms of darkness. Now you're gonna have to decide tonight, you need to decide what you're going to believe. If you believe the report that the Lord has given of you, you'll see his arm revealed through your life. True. You just need to decide tonight. I want you to decide what you're going to believe. Are you going to believe what God has said about you? Or are you going to believe something else? Because I, I once again, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, there is a lot of people who believe something very different about themselves than what God described in his word. And I want you to understand, principally, that means that you're not living and walking by faith. Because living, walk, living and walking by faith is living and walking by the Word of God, believing what God has said, calling it done. So tonight, in Jesus' name. Now, Annika, Jacqueline, Michaela, just step into your anointings. Step in the call of God upon your life. Just be bold and radical about it all. Start acting like you're Jesus or something. <laughs> just be so busy living the life of Jesus, you don't have pro time to have problems or issues. Okay? Yes. Just be given over to these things. Just be so given over to these things. And, 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 and listen, don't believe nothing else about yourself. No matter what happens, just don't, don't believe anything else about yourself. Just receive right now. Just receive. Be strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord in your inner being. Just receive right now. Pains go out of your body. Goes, sickness goes out of your body. Torments go out of your mind. In the name of Jesus. Worries and fears leave in Jesus' name. Just be strengthened right now. Just be strengthened right now. Just be strengthened. Just be strengthened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 Dear sister, let me pray for you.
Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord in your inner being. Now in Jesus' name, from the crown of your head to the of your feet. Strong, healthy, spirit, soul, and body. Full of all the good things of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord Astaya. Lebedasaya. Lebedasaya. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we cry out for rain. Father, we cry out for rain. I am so confident of the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the great bringing in of the harvests of Southern California, the great revival and awakening of this region. I just want you to be excited about it. I want you to prophesy it. I want you to talk about it. When you rise up, when you go out, when you come in, when you're talking with your friends, just begin to tell them about the great outpouring of the power of God upon Southern California, upon San Diego, how Satan's days are numbered, and the glory of heaven strikes the souls of men. Just live that way. Just live in the goodness, live in the blessings. Live in the thanksgiving, living in the joy now. I want you to take everything that you have and pour it into God, pour it into the kingdom. You know, I was thinking about the guys who was part of the formers of, of our nation, the Constitution, how many of them had great wealth, had great, you know, things in their life, and they took everything and brought it to bear for change of a government. Well, we in, we in the change of a bigger government. Hallelujah. And so I want you just to bring everything to bear. Don't hold anything back. Wake up in the morning. Give yourself to the Lord. The Lord sees it. He sees the sacrifice. He sees the offering. Just bring, it's a sacrifice of praise that you're just bringing it to Him every minute of the day. You're just living in this thing of, of, of participating with this outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Now listen, listen. I want you to do this for me. And, and I'm asking you, this is some of, the, some of you... There's emphasis on this, and I just really have got to make it a, a point. I've got to underscore it. I want you to let the Spirit of the Lord begin to produce a mature expression through your life. Just wait on the Lord. Give yourself to these things in the Spirit. 
Give yourself to these things in prayer. Give yourself to these things in your passion. As you're praying and, and, and walking out your daily life, just watch what God will do. There will become a maturity. There will come a maturity for you. There will come a maturity for you.